Today is Friday, August the 30th, 2024. This text we've been using all week, and it's my desire that you would come to refreshing in, in the presence of God. You would be restored in your spirit. That churches, the church you go to, the small group you attend, would be refreshed in the presence of God. Your family would be refreshed and stirred toward God, leading to hopefully local governments, state governments, international government. If God's people would do this, Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So the first step is to humble ourselves. Second step is to pray, pray for forgiveness. The third step is to seek his face continually. And the fourth step promoted in this scripture for refreshing and restoration is to turn from our sinful behavior. See, here, here's an amazing thing. God says, if you humble yourself, pray, seek his face, a miracle will happen you'll experience his presence. I'll forgive your sin and will heal your land. We get caught up in the presence of God when we ask for forgiveness and recognize that if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us. But then we go our way and go back and repeat that sin. Listen, when you come to God and humble yourself and pray and seek his face, you are required to, from there forward to turn from that wicked way you confessed. Or all the wicked ways you confess. We must not return to the habitual sinning we've been participating in. So God's people must genuinely repent by turning from specific sins and all forms of idolatry, renouncing conformity to the world, and draw near to God for his mercy, his forgiveness, and his cleansing. I, I want you to hear this because this is for the whole body of Christ. There must be a cessation of every evil we have and are participating in. Stop it today. Don't go back. These evil ways are derelict. They are the road or highway that we are conducting our life on and God demands that our spiritual restoration include that we forsake those ways. Hear it from Psalms 1.1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. By the way, this evil behavior, this evil wicked ways includes our words, our thoughts, and our actions. These ways are unpleasant, and those walking in them cannot recognize they are en enduring, the pain they are enduring is creating, is created, fed, and, and stimulated by their behavior. So we, we walk in this, what do we want to say, discombobulated fashion, this confused double-mindedness and and we wonder why we're in this mental and spiritual anguish. It's created by feeding and stimulating that behavior, that wicked way. Calamity and misfortune are the direct result of the wickedness of ungodly men against God. Sin lies at our door just as it did at Cain's. God is requiring us to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek his face continually, to turn, forsake all wicked ways. And the result is that God will bring restoration, the wholeness and the life we have forfeited by our failure to follow his plan. Listen to this in Second Chronicles. Chapter 29, verse six through 11, it says, for our fathers have trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God and have forsaken him, have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord turn their backs. Also, they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. Wherefore, the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem. He hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. 
For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and that you should minister unto him and burn incense. You and I, as priests unto God, are called to offer up the sacrifices of praise, offer incense of praise to the Lord God. We can't do it while we're still walking in wicked ways. You already confessed your sin, but you returned to it. Stop. Second Kings seventeen thirteen says, Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. In Jeremiah 25, 5, turn again now everyone from his evil way and from his wicked doings. And we find this, we find this throughout the scripture. And, and so even in Hebrews chapter four and verse 16, it says this word to us. And I'm locating it here. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. See, God promises to hear us when we do this. He will listen and hearken. He will forgive, pardon, and spare. He will purify. God wants us to come like the prodigal son in Luke 15 who came to his father when he came to his senses. I'm saying church, I'm saying believer, I'm saying small group, I'm saying father, I'm saying mother, I'm saying teenager, I'm saying son or daughter. Come to your senses. Don't wait for God to have to use the hammer of his word or the sore affliction to move us from our spiritual depletion. I, I'm sorry to have to say this, but many in the churches in America are living in sin. I'm sure it's true of the church that I attend. Some are fornicating. They're not married and they've moved in and living together. And they're still attending church and they haven't been corrected and they're depriving us corporately and themselves individually of the blessing of God. Every church that's having this going on must sorrow for this sin. Some have turned and they're attending church from their affection of a man for a woman and now have turned to a woman for a woman and a man for a man. Same sex desire. God forbids and he provides forgiveness and restoration by only a forsaking of the sinful behavior that we're participating in. Some in our church are spending God's money on drugs, alcohol, and toys. Some are robbing God of what he commands and are impoverishing the lot of us as well as their own lives. In Psalms 106, 15, and he gave them their request but sent leanness into their own souls. Are you not alarmed? See, we have to forsake wickedness. We repent, we get forgiveness, and then we go back to the leeks and onions of Egypt. And way too many in the church today have set up so many goals related to their success that they've ignored their relationship with God and become depleted spiritually, and they don't even know it. God has been waiting to speak to us through his word and his spirit, but we don't have time to listen. We have heart failure spiritually and we don't know it. And one of these days, we're gonna have a spiritual heart attack and we won't turn back to God. Some of us think that because our church has such a nice facility that that's the approval of God. It means we have God's approval and favor. 
We've grown complacent, church. Individuals, we've grown complacent and proud in our accomplishments. The spirit, that spirit is not only unproductive, it's a demonstration of self-sufficiency and pride. It must be repented of. And the face of God sought for mercy. All of us must contemplate the purity, perfection, and loving kindness of the Lord in contrast with our own sinfulness, unworthiness, and ingratitude. We must turn from our wicked, sinful, evil behavior and come toward God right now. If you say you're called by the name of the Lord, but you have not forsaken, you have not left sinful behavior, will you stop whatever you're doing right now and repent and decide and commit and make a covenant with God that you're finished with that sin? Will you pray with me? Shepherd, Holy Shepherd, Lord God Almighty, call out to you, turn me, turn me from every wicked thought, every evil plan, every evil way. I commit to forsake every sinful way, God. Show me if there's visible things in my life that I have hidden or tried to hide from you. And come cleanse me, I pray, O oh God. I know this, that as the shepherd seeking the lost one, he didn't come to slaughter it. He didn't come to slaughter that, that lamb that strayed. You came to restore. Restore us today, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I know this has been a long devotional. Will you turn to God now? Will you stop what you're doing? Will you forsake wickedness, evil thinking, and seek the face of God. Be blessed as you do, because you'll be rewarded with the presence of God in your life. Have a great day.